Hey, Brightsiders! This Mrs. Brightside is brought to you by Fred's BS. And don't worry, the BS stands for Breads and Spreads. So you're not getting bullshit. You're just getting some delicious cookies, baked goods, and jam. And they even have nuts available to add on to anything for just a dollar. And the BS box now has six cookies, four, a four-ounce jar of jam, and two small orders of baked goods. And that price is only $15. So why don't you use the promo code BRIGHTSIDE for 20% off your first order at fredsbs.com. Such a sweet, sweet thing to they got a hold of me. Open doors for little old ladies. I help the blind to see. I got no friends cause they read my Twitter. And they can't be seen with me. And I'm getting real shot down and I'm feeling mean. No more Mrs. Brightside. No more Mrs. Goody. No more Mrs. Brightside. They say I'm sick. I'm a sick. to Mrs. Brightside, where the glass is always half full. As always, I'm Lucretia Lyon, doing my sexy jazz voice because I'm getting over being sick. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have some very special guests today, as I always say, but this time I have two guests. <laughs> Introduce yourselves, yeah. Sure, this is Barbara Dillon. I am the editor-in-chief of Fanbase Press. And I am Brian Dillon, and I am a co-founder of Fanbase Press. And... You know, guys may have noticed that their last names are the same. They are married. Yes. Um, and uh, <laughs> so that's what we came to talk about today. Because, yes. uh, you know, some people wouldn't want to work with their spouse. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Yeah. This is true. This is true. No, we, we've uh, really lucked out in that we love working together and spending time together. So it doesn't seem to be a problem, knock on wood. So yeah. we're almost, uh, we're about nine years going strong uh, working on the company and we've been married for going on nine years as well. Yes. So, but we've been together for like 16 years, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you got married and started a company all the same year. We did. Must, must have needed a lot of tax write-offs. <laughs> <laughs> like, how can we make this more yeah. profitable? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so like it was that that's kind of interesting that you got married and started the company about the same time. Was there a reason for that or just yeah. I think it was just kind of happenstance. Yeah. I mean, we had mm. been um, huge fans of the comic book industry, comics and, and just artistic and creative mediums as a whole. Um, Brian went to school for acting and my older brother was an actor and writer, so I grew up in the theater and around creative people. And um, we had been working out here in L.A. in entertainment for a number of years and decided to create something of our own um, before, I mean, we had known each other since we met in college and so we moved out here together. So I think it was just kind of fortuitous that all of it seemed to happen at the same time. We had been, you know, making films and working on a, a graphic novel project together and so I think it all just kind of culminated and happened to be the same time that we getting married. <laughs> so, um, am I correct in all of those statements? I, I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think there was really a plan to it. It just came together the same year. Makes it easy to keep track. Exactly. <laughs> yes. You're like, you know, but there's not two anniversaries. Well, I guess if it was not the same month, you can have two anniversaries. Right, right? that's right. true. It was not the same good. month. Yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. yes. thank, thank God on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, who would survive that? Because uh, I'm one of those things that it's like, getting married is a lot of work. It, <laughs> yeah. it definitely is. I think, luckily, we very much wanted to be low-key and just yeah, wanted to the same thing. always remind ourselves of, like, we are doing this not for the wedding. 
uh, which for some people, you know, the wedding is the big thing and it's momentous, of course. But for us, we were like, how can we? How does everyone get to have actual fun? Yes. You not have to be worried about like, I can't be there. I can't fly across the country to be there. I can't buy this expensive gift. I can't afford this. We were like, let's just do what we can. Down and everyone else can do what they can, and, and I think that took a lot of the stress off of it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, but weddings, yes, are a ton yeah. of work. But, <laughs> and thankfully, we didn't get married in L.A. because I think we brought down the actual cost of the wedding substantially by getting married back east in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So. Well, and also family was closer yeah. there, so our family got to be there. They didn't have to fly across the country, and we were able to have uh, a smaller event for Los Angeles people so they didn't have to Feel fly like across the country exactly. unless they wanted yeah. to, you unless know, they wanted if to, you yeah. did, uh, they think, had a great time. <laughs> yes, and I think that's the funny thing is how we approached our wedding and how we approach our relationship is how we approach the company and that's practically and trying to keep everyone in mind and be mi- being mindful of as many things as we can, so, yeah. Yeah, and and that's kind of a great way to run a company because as we've seen, you know, especially lately, I mean, a lot of companies are, you know, failing left and right, especially media companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, like with Defy Media being one of the more recent huge hits, Mm -hmm. you know, is that, that's just sort of how you guys work though, is being a little bit more practical, not big showy because, you know, I didn't realize y'all been around for nine years, but you're really starting to make a name for yourself. Yeah, Yeah. and it definitely takes takes time, I mean, to build these things, and I think we do things with the the long term in mind mm-hmm. that you know obviously it's it's great to have those big hits and to you know get as much attention as possible but when you're trying to build an audience uh, a readership it, it does take time you've got to have them invested you've got to build their trust and uh, and, and obviously that takes time and, and we're in it for the long haul. Well I think what you see is there's a lot of people in um, I guess it's in entertainment in general but specifically with media companies and um you know, I don't know, funny enough, because we've been watching these uh, oh, <laughs> fire, fire festival, festival. documentaries, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, as I'm sure everyone is right now, yeah. on Hulu and Netflix. I think there is something really interesting to be seen in those documentaries, and that w- relates to what we're talking about, where uh, Barbara and I are, are very much individuals who, like, only feel secure about what we're doing when there's a solid foundation, and mm-hmm. we know that we've kind of got a handle on it. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people you encounter, I think, in L.A. and probably a lot of other cities um, where uh, they make uh, their career or their business off of something that maybe uh, the buzz is bigger than the actual product. And some people can swing that and really be successful with Mm -hmm. that. We're not people that like to do that. We're not comfortable. I don't know that we would ever attempt to do that. And so for, while it has taken, you know, we've been working on this company for 10 years, the nice thing is now 10 years in, we've got a good library of titles that we've published. Mm-hmm. We've got a strong network of connections. And I don't know, it reminds me of the way that I've always approached things creatively. I don't know if you're this way, Barbara, but I was always someone who was very shy but wanted to have the spotlight creatively. I, you know, I drew, I, I was an actor. Um, so I didn't feel comfortable the way I would see other people be like, hey, look at this thing I did. What I like to do is... <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, me neither. That I'm made like, me very no, don't look at me. <laughs> so I would, I would try to make the work stand on its own. I would work really hard at the work, and then someone else would go, oh, look at what Brian's drawing or something, or, or oh, hey, I saw that, that monologue you did. I was really impressed. And, and that has always been more satisfying for me. So I just think that that has naturally been the way we've... At least I've approached a business. I think Barbara's... We, I'm sure, has some differences, but mm-hmm. we're similar in enough ways that that sort of synced for us. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah, I was funny enough, I was not uh, ever intending to be in the creative spotlight. Um, my older brother was the actor, he was the entertainer. So, you know, growing up, I would always be, you know, backstage in the dressing room hanging out until he was done. Um, and that was fine. You know, I had other pursuits, and uh, I think that being in support of creative individuals you you get used to the background and it's fine like i i love editing and i love um creating a a platform through which other individuals can tell their stories because for me as of yet i I haven't had a story myself that i've wanted to tell or write um so i think for me foundation creating foundations is integral to what i do 
And so I think, like Bryant was saying, that it's it just meshed really well between the two of us, that Bryant does have that creative eye, and he does bring that uh, element to the company, whereas I, uh, and not that you don't as well, but my strong point is my organizational skills, my foundation building. So. She's underselling herself. She, <laughs> she, she has a very, uh, she's an eye for creativity too, and it has given uh, editorial uh, suggestions that have changed products we're working or projects we're working on for the better so you do have a creative element okay. i won't let you sell yourself short fine <laughs> <laughs> well and two there's a lot of creativity in organization mm-hmm. and i found that like to be something i've learned later along you know because like you know you probably are i mean i've been to your house you have nerd stuff like me yep. and you <laughs> did it creatively organized yeah that does take a creative bone and some people often dismiss that and i'm like i think that stuff's cool and now you're seeing you know now there's a netflix show about doing stuff like that yeah. so i'm like People are starting to get that there are different sides of creativity. It's not always just putting out, you know, a painting or a movie or, sure. you know, whatever it is. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, very yeah. much so. And I think that's a big part yeah. of our, our company and our tagline for Fanbase Press is that we celebrate fandoms and create new ones. And for us, everyone is a fan mm. of something. It doesn't have to be yeah. a comic book or it doesn't have to be a movie. You know, people can be uh, in love with, with science and space exploration yeah. and totally geek out about that. Or organization i'm someone that i geek out on organizational yeah. patterns and you know things like I that i know i love interior design <laughs> so much so like i totally get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know that we would uh i would ever expect this but yeah. honestly if someone like we have many stories run on the site about mm-hmm. celebrating fandoms and 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 things that people love if someone came to us and was like you know what i'm a huge fan of baseball I, you yeah. know, I'd be like, I don't know why, you know, why, why this is going to be on the site, given the content. But if you are a fan of it, and if you can, you know, do that spin, of course, like it, it's that kind of thing where it's like, there literally is anything, and we, it's kind of like what you were saying about yeah. our uh, creativity. Mm-hmm. People naturally go, oh, that must be just the arts, you know, that must be drawing and painting and and things. They don't think about the creativity and, as you said, mm-hmm. organizing things and and everyday life. And I think Barbara's saying the exact same thing with with this the idea of fandom is we naturally think oh Star Wars and and uh, GI Joe and whatever Harry Potter and like you know people are fans of things all the time mm-hmm. without realizing that they don't apply that label to it yeah mm-hmm. but they are fans of it, yeah know? like and you brought up baseball that was a good point because sports fans I mean often sometimes are dismissed but I read hockey comic books I love hockey so much I had a guy on uh, mm-hmm. that show we did it after Buzz together uh, that wrote those books you know he called in because he's in Detroit you know hockey town so mm-hmm. it's like yeah like but peep, I was interested in it. I don't think my co-hosts were. But, <laughs> but there's, yeah. a, there's a super passionate yeah, like, fan base, especially yeah. when you start looking at how sports have no. become with like the the stats, the fantasy leagues. Yeah. I mean, the discussion. And I mean, geez, if I could imagine, I think in many ways, you know, people thought G four and things were were going to be like what ESPN is for yeah. sports fans, mm-hmm. but. But yeah, clearly there are fans. These mm-hmm. people are calling themselves fans. They they love this. They would devour it a hundred percent of the time if they could. Some of them, you know, and and that should be. Uh, it, it's interesting because there's yeah. there's more similarities than sometimes we we uh, even allow ourselves to acknowledge. You know. Yeah, that reminds me of Crazy Ex Girlfriend this past week. Do you guys watch that show? We have no, not. No. no. Well, are you aware it's a musical? Yes. It, okay. Yeah. So one the one of the songs is like two of her ex boyfriends are trying to bond over something because they're having to play a game night on a team. Okay. And and we're all like, wait. We both like sports, and it's just like, sports analogies, sports analogies, <laughs> and it works, because that was the way that they could communicate together, sure. and understand each other, exactly. and then work well on a team. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So for us, we, we love all kinds of fandoms, and no matter yeah. what it is, we want to be supportive and, and uh, appreciative that, sure. that different people have different interests. Yeah. And, you know, well, I'm going back a little bit when you said, you know, how you came up and, like, your brother was the star. Same thing with me. My brother oh, yeah? is far more talented than I could ever dream about. I mean, <laughs> most of my jokes are he wrote. But he just, 
I think he got tired of the spotlight. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just, you know, is more shy now than ever. He's oh, just like, you know what, I'm good. He, he's a brilliant musician, but nobody ever really knows it because he doesn't really put it out there. And, mm -hmm. I, and I try to encourage him, but, like, and I'm like, no, I'm the one who moved here. Being <laughs> and, and I'm like, most of these jokes you wrote, but he won't perform them. Oh, no. Um, so he's like, you can do it. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, yeah. So I get that, and I think that's why sometimes we're able to deal a little bit better in this business, because we didn't necessarily want to be in the spotlight. It was just sort of like, well, that was where I was comfortable, being mm -hmm. the, this, you know, stage person. So you kind of learn how to, you know, navigate the other side as well, which which you kind of need to know here. Yeah. And I think that's, that's why, you know, you guys have been successful, obviously, kind of seeing both sides. Sure. And, you know, it is one of those things that... And like you said, people sometimes burn out, like, yeah. you know, the, <laughs> the sure. festival and um, oh, things like that. <laughs> you know, when you try to shine too bright, sometimes you just go. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Can I please tell you? Uh, yeah. I've been talking with Brian about it nonstop. Yeah. But that, the, we watched both the, the Hulu and the Netflix Fire Festival documentaries. It stressed me out so much. Just from an organizational and planning when perspective. When they weren't organizing yeah. stuff, she was like was arguing like, with them. Like, why won't why you won't organize? You? <laughs> plan, plan. Oh, yeah. Well, I knew someone that was involved oh, in that my Universal gosh. Man Con. That was a similar oh, situation. Oh, yes, yes. That's and, right. Yeah, like, and it was just like, I mean, what they were promising. Mm -hmm. And it's like nobody had red flags. Okay. And Because it was like, how are they going to be able to do this? Yeah. Like, but there was no, no you know, wow. I, you know, I had lost, like, money on a plane ticket because I was supposed to do, like, a film screen right, right. Yeah. stuff there. But, that you know, luckily that was all I did. All these creators, like, I don't know. When yeah. you have to imagine that there yeah. is people that have, like, there, I guess the, the reason no. that this is being done is someone has done this successfully yeah. in some capacity. Probably mm -hmm. not to that extreme. But there are, you know, I can't even imagine that kind of job. There's, yeah. there's these individuals out there that put together these events and they don't even, you know, it's like, oh, if this works out over here for the ticket sales, then we'll be able to pay the talent, which is already booked, and say they make it swing, and I would, I feel like I'd have a heart attack oh, under yeah. the stress, you know? Yeah, because <laughs> like, yeah, that was sort of the thing, is like, how are all these things going to happen? Why, where, where is this money coming from? But people, I mean, that's what happens, is yeah. they don't think through these things logistically, because I guess... How do people get money to even think of these ideas first is what I've always yeah. wondered. I think you that's know, the interesting thing. Sorry. No, to go, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I think that's the really interesting thing is that to some individual's credit that, that Lucretia, kind of yeah. like you were talking about earlier, there are these people who will shoot for the stars mm -hmm. and just really go for things. And some of them yeah. are successful. Sometimes they do work out. Absolutely. Because sometimes if you just, if you yeah. put yourself out there, you're confident and you go for it, yes, it, it can work out. But... I would say for the large majority of people, it doesn't work out necessarily, yeah. but you still have to, it takes that special spirit, kind of like you were saying as well, Bryant, about like, you know, if, if you're really trying to get your bang for your buck and trying to make something spectacular happen, you know, you need that spirit, you need that ability within you to sh to just go for it, even if it could yeah. not work well, it's out. Interesting. But experience helps. Experience helps. <laughs> it's experience interesting because you think of like people that did maybe were in the similar vein or people yeah. like, um, you know, I, I, you know, I would imagine Mark Zuckerberg is sort yeah. of in that world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what's his name? I'm forgetting his name, but from at the Apple. Um, Bill Gates. No, not mm -hmm. Bill Gates. Oh, um, Steve Jobs. <laughs> Steve Jobs, yeah. Yeah. yeah, who you know basically came back and took, retook his yeah. company mm -hmm. after being being pushed cut out, out put, yeah. pushed out. And I mean, it's I guess there's equivalence when you when I, when you said about um, how people like sort of talking about these these. I guess, bright stars mm -hmm. in the field. It reminds me of the way that many of us are drawn to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Because you can uh -huh. say the same about actors, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. There is the, the Brad Pitt. There is the, the you know, the uh, whatever, Jennifer Aniston or Jennifer Lawrence or whoever you consider to be at the top, you mm -hmm. know, at that point. But then there's like thousands of people you didn't see who threw everything at it mm -hmm. and didn't get there. Right. You know? And maybe some of them didn't get there because of planning. They didn't, do the right, approach it the right way, and then some just, it was the odds were against them, right. you know? Yeah. But you have that desire because you see those people that succeeded, mm -hmm. those bright lights, and I think it's the same in business. People see these people who are, are achieving things and the risk worked out for them. They made this money mm -hmm. and they want to chase that. There's, yeah. a, there's a hunger for that. 
Well, and too, I think some of the better examples of where, you know, good planning and hard work and all of that come together are the best examples of like last ability and whether it be business or like we'll just keep on the actor analogy say somebody like a bradley cooper or jeremy renner who were basically doing guest work and things mm-hmm. they you saw them really progress but that's why we're still seeing them too exactly. as opposed to like some people like you know megan fox was somebody who like honestly has great comedic jobs but People just don't didn't really take, you know, when she shined too bright in the beginning mm-hmm. and came out of nowhere. And I think that that's often hurts people. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It does. It's interesting who survives that because yeah. you, can, you can think of some, like Sam Worthington's a guy who was everywhere oh, for yeah. a second he was. and then yeah. like went, went away and I, he might come back. But I mean, it's, it's Colin Farrell's another one where I, yeah. I feel like he basically ended up able to ride it back into sort of a solid career. But there mm-hmm. was a point where it was like people were almost sick of him because he was all On over everything. the place yeah. you know yeah. so it's interesting who is able to ride that wave and work it out and who uh is not you know yeah and now a word from our sponsors tired of nagging yourself to get a website for your artistic career already radportfolios.com creates affordable custom websites for artists use code brightside that's one word for half off your website startup radportfolios.com so you can get back to getting booked yeah, and, you know, as I say, that that's a lot with the business as well. I mean, I, I know that it was on Adam Carolla's show recently, just kind of talking about how it's interesting the companies that have stuck around, and, you know, the longest-running companies often are booze, so that's something to invest in. Right. But you know what? Marvel and DC have been around for a long oh, time, sure. so you guys did invest in a good business, too. <laughs> so. <laughs> and, and that yeah. is to say even that, you know, DC and Marvel have both had their ups and downs. Oh, yes. Marvel yeah. uh, filed for bankruptcy at one point. I yeah, mean, it's, there was almost an end to yeah, Marvel. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, and then, obviously, with the, the film adaptations, it kind of reinvigorated the entire brand, and, you know, it is what it is today. So it, it's, I think, like you were saying, Brian, that it's so many different things, and you can't count on one formula to be the successful formula, that it's going to be something different for everybody. It's going to be luck and hard work and dedication and timing. It's so many different factors that you can... Basically, I think if, if you're doing what you love, if you're following your dreams, if you're authentic in what you're doing, you have the best shot at it, but it, it's never a guarantee. So if you can yeah. make sure that you're happy while you're doing it, then <laughs> please do just so that you have some quality of life. Well, and that's one benefit I would say that we have yeah. working together. And I don't know if everyone who works together as a couple does have this, but Barbara and I, as since you mentioned happiness earlier being part of the goal, I yes. guess, of the company. <laughs> um, we, I mean, it's important to explain that we have sort of a unique uh, set, uh, situation because while we do run the company, we both have day jobs. Mm-hmm. So we have a, a security, uh, you know, basis of, of financial income that allows us to be a little more flexible uh, with our creative endeavors. But uh, But we're able to check in with one another, I feel like, on a regular basis and be like, Hey, are are you happy? Are you enjoying this? Do you mm-hmm. you know? Do you think that everyone else is, that's working on it is enjoying? And we can check in with them when we when we uh, prompt one another. And uh, I, I only bring that up just because I feel like there's also this thing, especially in LA or, or maybe it's specifically creative careers, where sometimes you end up chasing something that you think you want, and it's not really what you want. It's like you just feel like you can't give up that dream because. If you're happy with something a little less, that's somehow invalid. And yeah. it took me a long time, you know, past my 30s to really come to terms with the idea of like, hey, my happiness can literally be whatever it is. If it's not if it's not impressive to somebody else, but it's the life that I want, well, then what does it matter, you know, mm-hmm. in the end, you know? So I just wanted to put that out there because some people might be going through the same thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that is what we all kind of go through. I mean, and not just as creatives. I think a lot of people, because people have dreams just in general, and you're chasing them, chasing them, but sometimes it's the journey that matters. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like, you know, I always love to mention how I met your mother since, you know, Mm -hmm. all the yellow umbrella stuff on my thing. But, yeah, it's once Ted finally got that it was like, what was going on here, not this pursuit of wife and kids, it then worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I think that's sort of with anything is sort of you have to realize that you know it's kind of the pursuit that's fun and it's all that stuff in between it's not really the getting what you want part (laughs) yeah because that's a very small part of the entire the entire point yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, you mentioned sort of um, a little bit earlier that going back to like the actor analogy where you're, you guys both have day jobs and that's something that we're finally realizing now with podcasts and social media where people are a little bit more honest. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was something that the, the Hollywood industry tried to kind of hide or yeah. just like most creative pursuits. Right. People are kind of ashamed, but we all have day jobs. Mm -hmm. yeah, trust me. There are people I know that have been regulars on TV shows, but mm -hmm. they are still working. I mean, behind the scenes doing what they can because, you know, as we said, you know, this could moment could be fleeting. Yeah. And you have to have some sort of safety net. I mean, like Jeremy Renner, you know, he still flips houses. Mm -hmm. And that is what he did, you know, while he was still pursuing to be an actor. Yeah. And, you know, uh, how does that help, like, you know, having that safety net? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I think it helps tremendously. And I think yeah. it, it gives us a perspective always of, you know, it reminds me of there was the... Uh, a while back and it became you know the social media uh, issue but uh, the gentleman who was a, a young man when he was on the Cosby show and then he was photographed yeah, Jeffrey Owens yes, yes oh, um, right, photographed yeah. as working at Trader Joe's to feed his family and pay his rent and mm -hmm. you know and I think that that's the thing is that there's this perception a lot of times when it comes to Hollywood especially yeah. of you know that uh, you know once you're an actor you've made it and like you were saying that everybody right, yeah. You know, or if you're in a big yeah. movie all of a sudden, then, then you oh, must yeah. be just making exactly. thousands of dollars. And I think, yeah. that, that, I think that, like you were saying, Lucretia, that understanding and kind of debunking these perceptions goes a long way. And it yeah. really does help people to understand. Like, I know a lot of times when uh, I'm moderating panels and we'll get questions from the audience and a young man or woman will stand up and say, well, I want to be a writer. You know, I'm working on this script. And I stop them all the time and say, if you are writing... You are a writer. writer. Yeah. There's no qualifier. It's you are doing it that makes you a writer. And, and you should, you know, take that in and appreciate that because you, you don't want to devalue or limit your abilities. You know, if, if you are a writer but you work at Trader Joe's full time, I don't see any problem with you saying you're a writer and that's what your passion is and that's what your career is because that's who you are so and I think a lot of it comes from social media as well this idea that we are living these perceived dream like lives yeah you're not going to put the picture up of you working your day job exactly. or the few and far between well and you know? like this, this to the same degree you're not going to post about the failures that you've had things that you've tried no. that you didn't succeed at but I, I think it's important for us to all remember that you know, it's not all sunshine and roses, that it's hard, that it takes time and dedication, and sometimes you're going to have to give things up that you don't want to in order for dreams to happen. But I don't know, I think there's something valuable in remembering that we all work hard, we all are people at the end of the day, and we have to do whatever we do to make ends meet and, and just to be happy. I think that's the big point is, you, is that we each do what we have to do and that's different mm -hmm. for every single person Absolutely. individually. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I know, like w bringing up this discussion about day jobs, sometimes, um, at least in the actor community, I remember where there would be friction would be there are professional actors, working actors who mm -hmm. they're able to do that as their only job. Yeah. And they sometimes feel like, oh, if the industry starts to see that they, you know, they can pay people less mm -hmm. or they can get yeah. a actor who's not unionized yeah. and sort of shift that weight to someone so that it becomes the standard for the creative person to have to also work another job to, you know, benefit their creativity. You know, they worry about that. And I think, all uh, you know, there's a valid concern with that. Um, we have not reached a place in this country, like I uh, say, a country like Norway, um, where I met some individuals when I was a young actor, and they explained to me in shock. I was I was in shock that that their country uh, essentially makes sure that acting work is spread out among the citizens, you know, wow. and it, and it's essentially democratized in a certain way so that you won't be someone who makes millions of dollars as an actor, but you, you will a have a living wage. and you yeah. will do that, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, you know, there's, again, debate that we don't even need to go into about whether that would be appropriate for this country or not. But I think the point is to illustrate that there are many thoughts about uh, having a day job versus not having a day job, which way you pursue your, uh, your creative path. But what I think Barbara and I would say is don't, don't make it about someone else or the way someone else does it. Find out what works for you mm -hmm. what you're trying to achieve 
what you want. And yes, there's always going to be someone who might be able to criticize your approach to it, but figure out what it is you need and, you know, pursue that, Mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't force the way someone else tells you, you have to do it into, you know, your method. If it, if it's not going to work for you. Yeah. Because that's the thing is we're all different and we all, you know, function a little bit differently. So it is kind of whatever, you know, square peg fits in that hole. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, trying to think if there's any downside to working uh, with your spouse. There are some some downsides. I was like, how do I put this? Yes. Yes. Um, Yes. Yes. And we're we're happy to talk about this. Absolutely. So for me, and I won't speak for you, for me, Mm -hmm. the consistent problem that we also consistently work to alleviate is not having enough personal time for one another. And... Uh, it's a struggle because when you have a full-time job and then your other full-time job, which is our passion, our company, takes up a lot of time. It's very easy to be sitting in the car driving to XYZ and then just bring up some work conversation. Sometimes it's good to. Sometimes it's great. It's a really, you know, easy way to have your colleague there and you can make use of the time. But at other times it's hard to separate that. And it's necessary to separate that and to appreciate one another and to kind of be able to step away. Um, And for us, we're constantly communicating about it and discussing it and how it impacts us and how we can improve upon it. So I think that that's the other really important thing is just to always note to your partner, or Bryant in this case, that... You know, you are a priority and you're important, and we are important as a, a cohesive, loving unit. I'm so, needy. so you're needed, Brian. I said needy. Needy? Oh, <laughs> I don't know about that. But um, yeah, so I, I think it's important to constantly have that conversation, to constantly check in with the other person about how are you feeling, how are you doing. Let's make sure that, you know, even though it's tough, let's value the time that we have that's downtime because otherwise we'll go crazy. Yeah, is there even downtime? No. Because I know you guys literally work all the There's time. There's not a ton of There's downtime. There's not a ton. We, we have to carve some downtime out every now and then. Yes. And I think that is the key, is like when you work for yourself, you are the one who has to set aside when you take me time. Mm-hmm. And it can be hard, especially because bills have to be paid. Exactly. That always sucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that, is, that is difficult. Yeah. You know, with the thing that I always uh, struggle with, or one of the things, I guess, it would be um, is, is not only the downtime that Barbara talks about, but specifically, I guess, um, I am a romantic fella. I like to have a romantic relationship with my wife. Mm-hmm. She's beautiful to me, and I love spending time with her. But we are also uh, partners in a, in a company, and I, there is always a balance, especially... Um, I guess given sometimes, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time at conventions, places where I guess are both a public scenario, but also in some ways a business environment yeah. for us, even yeah. though it's casual. And so there's always this line of like, all right, well, how do we keep the romance alive without me completely making, uh, I don't know. Public displays. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it's, not, it's not even public. Yeah. I guess I don't, I, there are times where I even feel like, Showing you affection in a a public environment, a business environment, somehow uh, delegitimizes your position in others' eyes. I don't think that that should be the case, mm-hmm. but I see it happen occasionally. And so that I think there are, there are struggles with that, where it's like you have to know, of course, like when you are sort of like business couple and when you are like you know mm-hmm. regular couple, and you will have to do exactly what Barbara was saying at the same time you have to make sure that if there's a lot of business couple time going on you have to seize those moments where you don't have that you know whether it is a moment where we're alone and I can uh, tell her she looks beautiful or I love I love you or you know I'm glad we're doing this or whatever or if it's like saying hey we could be like reviewing a script tonight but we haven't had any time let's go to dinner together or Mm -hmm. something like that you know so you just have to really make sure that those are priorities as as Barbara was saying make sure you put the time and I again it's something where I look back in my life and I go there was a long time where I wasn't giving the importance to that task as much as it should be and Mm -hmm. I wish I had realized that sooner you know but I think we are also fortunate in that a lot of people 
who know us or know the company know that we are married. Um, so there's a fortunate uh, happenstance in the fact that there's an authenticity to the fact that we're a married couple. We're running yeah. this business They're together. not shocked yeah. if we, like, They're, she gives me a kiss yeah. on the cheek yes. or something. It's, yes. It's part it's of like the brand. To, yes. it's, not like, it's not like you have <laughs> yeah. to drain that out of exactly. there. But, but, the, so. but there is, you know, there, yeah. it, there are all sorts of nuances yes, to it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and one of the benefits is like, you know, you guys do get to travel sometimes with mm-hmm. your business and, you know, that can always be a fun little getaway. It can you know, be, it yes. Can be. Yeah. Depends, it depends yeah. where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> if it's San Diego Comic Con, no. <laughs> it's a little intense. Oh, we've no, had some pretty good times at San some Diego Comic Con. Yes. It but, is intense. Though. Yeah. But yeah. We, we definitely try to, again, just make use of the time we have and even when one of us may be stressed out, you know, the other really does step up and say like, hey... We don't get a lot of time. Let's take this time and appreciate it because we're here, we're together. You know, appreciate what you have. It reminds me of uh, that uh, movie. I can't remember the name. Oh, Finding Neverland. Do you remember this oh, movie? No. no. It was no. Uh, the story of J.M. Barry writing Peter Pan and, okay. and sort of his inspiration. Johnny Depp was the lead in uh, Happier Times for him. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> um, Oh, I'm forgetting the actor's name. One of your favorite actors from Rain Man. What's a uh, Dustin Hoffman? Yeah, yeah, Dustin Hoffman plays a uh, theater owner. They're putting on a play, mm-hmm. and it's not working. And Barry is like all torn up, and the actors are like, uh, and, and he says to him at one point, he's like, they're just talking as like you know the the set is being cleaned up after rehearsal, and Barry's just kind of stressing out about it. And he's like, hey, what's it called? And he's like, what? He's like. What is it called? Mm. Like a play. Mm. Yes, a play. It's supposed to be a yeah. play. You're yeah. playing, yeah. you know, and and you, we have to have those moments. You know, you know, you have to remind yourself sometimes, like, hey, this is it's comics. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> fandom. It's supposed to be fun. It does require serious work and planning. But if you, if you're not smiling a little bit or being like, I kind of like doing this, then then maybe it's time to reevaluate. You know. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think that that's where, you know, some creatives sometimes just never get to that point where they, you know, where they get miserable. And it's like, if you're ever not having fun at this, just take a moment. Yeah. Maybe decide, is there something you can change to make this better? Or maybe do something else. Yeah, maybe there's something yeah, else that exactly. would be fun for you. Yeah. And maybe just go do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. try it out. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't make yourself miserable. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what this podcast is all about. Just trying to think of the bright side. Exactly. That's true. So, that's true. Yeah. Because I'm trying not to make myself miserable. <laughs> it's an important task. Yes. So what do you guys do to try and uh, not make yourselves miserable? We like to go out to dinner. We no. do. We like to watch TV and movies and go to plays and what else do we do? To, those are all fun things. Those yeah. are most of the fun yeah. things. I mean, usually, <laughs> yeah. usually, like, we haven't done, uh, we, we aren't able to consume media as fast as yeah. we'd like to, and our, yeah. our friends uh, do. Barbara gets to read everyone's reviews as she's copy editing them, mm-hmm. so she feels like she reads a thousand comics, but she yeah. hasn't read a comic in, you know, or reads periodically, it seems like, every mm-hmm. so so often. Mm-hmm. So we're, we've been focusing more on that. We have free time, catch up on something that we haven't seen, or we... Uh, read some comics that are gathering in our yeah. to-read pile, yeah. or even, like, sometimes we'll just go out and, you know, talk, and we'll end up talking, like, whatever. We'll have a couple drinks and end up, like, debating, like, what's going to happen to Kylo Ren? <laughs> <laughs> And, and that must help, right? Because y'all can actually talk yes, about these things. Yes, that is very helpful. Because, like, I have, you know, fr- nerd friends, and then I have regular friends, and then I'll just start talking about, like, oh, my God, how important it is that Constantine did this. <laughs> right, right, right. And they're just like, what the hell are you talking about? Yes. But it's the same thing with my nerd friends if I talk about hockey, and they're like, what? Yeah, <laughs> you got you to play yeah. the audience. But it's good to have people that do share yeah. those and want to, like, sort of have that conversation with yeah. you. Yeah. Because, you know, what's going to happen to Kylo Ren is really important. It is. Where did you guys come on that? Brian? <laughs> we don't, I would say, argue that we don't know what's going to happen. We have we have theories of what we want to happen yes. to Kylo Ren, but I'm really like, The Last Jedi, for positive or negative, has left it in a place where I'm like, I don't know what they can do with this yeah. film. <laughs> I don't know what the next film is. I'm yeah. like, could be anything. 
could be nothing. I don't know. Like, <laughs> and I think that was the thing with The Last Jedi. And I think that's what upset so many people, you know, is that it's just like, well, where do we go from here? Yeah, they're, I think they were expecting some sort of here. cliffhanger, yeah. like, oh, what? I want to know what happens to X or mm-hmm. Y. Yeah. And instead, it's like, well, anything, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. So we'll see. I, I, Barbara, did you have any no, thoughts? That's- that's kind of where I am. Part of me loves to have these wildly speculative theories that definitively are not going to happen in the movie, but um, when it comes to actually like being spoiled on anything or actually talking about, well, this is what's going to happen, I try to stay away from it. I, I don't know why, but especially with Star Wars and the Marvel movies, I don't want to know. Like, Yeah, I don't like, want to be spoiled. I just want to see it exactly. like, when it comes to that stuff. There are some things I don't really care about sure. spoilers at all. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I probably predicted it. But with this, I'm like, nope, they'll throw stuff out of left field and I don't want to know. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. You you were different, Brian. Yeah, yeah I read all the spoilers. <laughs> uh, Star Wars, I'm a little different. I won't. I, I I go like if I'm spoiled, okay, but I won't seek them out. Right. The Marvel ones, I'm usually like if someone's like, I know exactly how Endgame ends. I'm like, oh, I'll read that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is a little bit of curiosity though when it comes to like Endgame because I mine now is more like I just want to be right. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I'm like, as I've said, I'm like, all the cool people are going to die. Like, Iron Man, Thor, like, they're just going to kill all, and then it's now the new- Spider-Man's, mm-hmm. like, Marvel. I was like, that's sure. what I assume. I was like, but, I don't know. How about well, you guys? Well, Endgame's really interesting because it's kind of the reverse of the Star Wars, where I feel like there's mm-hmm. lots of threads to mm-hmm. go, like, well, what's going to happen with this? Mm-hmm. And what about this? But still, they could do anything. I, and I think that's what the benefit is or, or the, the thing that I appreciate about the Marvel movies is that they're constantly subverting expectations. And so I have never gone into a movie thinking, oh, this is what's going to happen or this is what, you know, the kind of the trope or, you know, mm-hmm. storytelling wise is likely to happen. And it's always something completely different that I could have never expected. And I appreciate that. I yeah. appreciate, you know, having the journey and having this adventure that I don't know what is going to happen so I, I, I love them happen. because just like you say they roll out a new ca- uh, character that maybe I know but I'm not super familiar with or right. a character I'm like I don't love this character and then they I, I'm at the point they've been so successful like I'm like alright roll out your new character show yeah. me what you got because I'm probably going <laughs> to like it afterwards yes. I'm probably going to be like now I need a t-shirt with that guy's face <laughs> on it you know <laughs> Yeah, and, and that is what I love is like all the little like you know nods and things like I love that in all mediums. That's why I enjoy Chuck so much and Psych and shows mm-hmm. like that where it's like, yay, you gave me something that, that I understand that I'm like I get that reference, but let me know more. Like, yeah. you know, and it makes you more interested in the thing that you're like, yay, that was for me. Absolutely, very much so. Yeah. Yes. And oh, how about you guys? I know we're all big nerds. So, yes. what are your main main nerddoms? Main fandoms, Brian. You have so many. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you go first? Since yeah. I have so many. Um, well, I love the Hunger Games book series. Um, I read them years ago, and then and just read the first book and was enraptured and get gave it to Brian, and uh, he had an idea to adapted into an audio drama which we took yeah we took three years and we adapted all three books into over 80 hour long episodes and uh, Brian played Peta and I played Katniss but it was an entire endeavor with an entire cast and amazing writers and directors and um, but say, it, say the name so people can find it if the they Katniss want to. The Chronicles. Oh, yeah. so it's still out there. It's, it's yeah. on iTunes. You can download it. Um, but it was such a, an amazing experience because I, I had never um, connected with a female character in literature before at all. And then I read the Hunger Games books and was so in awe of Katniss and finally found someone that I could connect with. And so then having the opportunity to work for three years being inside this character has had such a lasting impact for me and and made the character and her journey so much more um resonating for me so that's i would say my all time and i have my hunger games mocking jay tattoo and um but it means so much to me in so many different facets of my life um so i would say that that is the top one but i'm also a huge i love star wars um I think we share those. Like yeah. we, I would say, both the Hunger Games and Star Wars were very big. If you come into our house, the first thing you see is a massive, 
painting of the Mockingjay yes. on her wall. Yeah. And that pretty much establishes <laughs> our Here's where dominance. we stand on the Hunger Games, yes. Uh, I, I tend to also have, like, really... I've been, like, a passionate Aliens fan, Alien franchise, uh, since fourth grade, third grade, yeah, something like that. Yeah, your shirt is awesome. Yes, yeah. I have, <laughs> I have yeah. a Ripley and Jonesy no. shirt on right now. And, and uh, I... I absolutely love Jurassic Park. Um, I haven't. I'm, I'm lukewarm on the the latest films, but I just love that original film and the universe. And the, I got really into the comics as a kid. And we have a whole Jurassic Park themed bathroom where yeah. Barbara lets me keep all my Jurassic Park paraphernalia. Yeah. And, and then Buffy is the other one I would have to mention. I'm like, see, Buffy was my jam growing yeah. up. Yeah. Like I lived and breathed Buffy. Same here. Oh. Same here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I just can't. I it's been a while. I will say I haven't rewatched the series in a, in a while, but I've been really invested in the the Dark Horse comics, and uh, I, I've actually been able to meet a number of the comics creators and purchase some of their artwork. And I don't know. I love that community. I love that show. I those characters continue to be characters that I go back to again and again, and and the words and the scenes. And, you know, even the, the spinoffs, Angel, things like that. I oh, just yeah, love I every Angel. piece of that universe, yeah. Yeah, to me, like, the first two and a half seasons of Angel, to me, often uh, surpassed Buffy in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it was a different uh, theme. But, yeah, I, I, like, even had a Buffy website when I was, like, 12. Oh, yeah? yeah, and it was, like, an RPG website, Chaos Bleeds. Um, oh, yeah, I, Chaos uh, Bleeds. Yeah, <laughs> I, I always would play Anya because, like, she was my favorite character. Yeah. Like, I was, like, really into Buffy. <laughs> you, you know, you, you, Buffy was a great yeah. show because much like when the, the X-Files, which came out Yeah, way X-Files before it, is my other jam. Yeah, <laughs> I, was the same, I was the same way. And those shows played really well into um, the online audience that was emerging i remember there were like uh chat rooms and and fandom pages showing up at that time and uh i don't know there was just there was just something really cool about like how you know the audience got to connect with the actual people and and there were two shows where like i had never experienced until those moments shows where i knew not just like the main actor but i knew like screen or uh, script writers and like directors and executive producers and they mattered to me they weren't just names on the credits Mm -hmm. yeah and that was the thing is both of those shows really captivated you i know one of the greatest things i've done here was get to interview glenn morgan and it was so awesome because yeah i had posters of david duchovny on my wall while the other girls had boy bands like i was like no yeah no fox Mulder. screw dick carter (laughs) I think I was I, a weird kid. <laughs> no, no, not at all. We we are you were the from kind the of same kids that we hung yes. out with. Yep. Yes. I think, and going back to how we think that you know everyone has a fandom of something. My one fandom that is outside of the geek genre uh-huh. is I love Mr. Rogers. Yes, yes. Mr. Um, Rogers is badass. Yes. Like, yeah. So I I find that a lot of the things that I do I have him in mind and kind of follow his ideals and, and his beliefs. And um, while I'm not a religious person myself, I think that he just had such good in mind uh, in his heart through everything that he did. So I'm constantly echoing Mr. Rogers. Which, that's what everyone should do. Mm-hmm. I mean, if there was anybody who anybody should look up to, that is Mr. Rogers. And like you say, I too, I didn't grow up uh, religious and, you know, but I was around religious people who were like Mr. Rogers. Mm-hmm. So to me, I've never been that anti-religion people. I'm like, no, some people like are good and, and I'm like, like Mr. Rogers. Yes. <laughs> and it's good to, you know, listen to other people that also feel that way because it's like, you know, what he preached you know you know for lack of a better term was kindness Mm -hmm. simple as that yeah Yeah, Yeah, very much about just being human to one another and Mm -hmm. it's once again it's again it's interesting how it parallels like when you talk about religion like that i think about it like fandom to a degree fandom can be a horrible toxic thing if you want to use it that way (laughs) exactly but it also can be a very positive thing if you want to use it that way you know Mm -hmm. Well, and too, I feel like fandom is one of those things that often people without religion do seek out uh, because whether people like to feel that way or not, everybody does seek something, whether it be politics, whether it be fandom, whether it be religion or Mm -hmm. things like that. There is something that you are fanatical about. I mean, that's 
it's what we do as humans. Or, you know, I mean, there's probably a few sociopaths that don't like anything, but whatever. I, could very well be. <laughs> I, mean, I like nothing. Yeah. No, I mean, I'll, you and know, you're don't a fan say of nothing. Everybody. And yeah. you get that you know, yeah. 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 Ah, so I knew you were a fan. You're a fan of nothing. <laughs> and I think if we all kind of noticed that we were all alike in that way, right, that, right. that I think people would kind of get a little bit more on the Mr. Rogers train of kindness. It's like, no, no, everybody's fanatical about something. Exactly. They're just about Jesus, and I like Constantine. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, So as we kind of start to wrap up here, is there anything, any kind of advice you guys, you know, maybe either wish you'd had earlier or just want to give to people that you've kind of learned over the years? Is working together. Yeah, you know what? I can do that. Um, Mm -hmm. I would give... This is advice for working together. um, But I would also argue that this is advice for anyone in a relationship. And it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It helps with a romantic relationship. But a relationship where you care about the other individual, whether that be romantically or platonically. Um, And it comes from my father, honestly. My father gave me this advice when he renewed his vows. Um, and that's to forgive quickly and uh, it wasn't to like you know let people abuse you or like let yourself be run over but the quick or the biggest thing I think that stands in the way even today in my own life I think from uh, having a happy life from having a life that progresses forward is the stubbornness of feeling slighted or feeling um, unappreciated or whatever it is you know I think the quicker you can realize that more than likely the person that you're having the issue with feels the same way as you also feels like they're unhappy or that they feel like maybe they're not being appreciated um, you can you can get over that very easily by forgiving people and telling them and being upfront and just being like you know what I'm sorry I did wrong you know I, I don't care what's going on right now let's let's move forward um i feel like so often in this world wherever we are we don't want to forgive and we think that that we lose something or we're weakened if we forgive and i would argue that if you approach it the right way it's actually a sign of strength and it's a way to be stronger so that would be my advice how about you farmer anything mine is always the same (laughs) (laughs) Um, and it comes from Mr. Rogers. Yeah. My favorite quote of his is that there are three ways to ultimate success. The first is to be kind, the second is to be kind, and the third is to be kind. And I think that that applies in all facets of life, whether it be professionally, personally. Um, if, if you're doing anything in life and you are genuinely kind and thoughtful and empathetic to people, uh, it makes everything worth it. Um, even if you're having a bad experience, uh, the fact that you were genuine and thoughtful yourself I mean, it, it, others will do whatever they will do, but knowing that you were yourself and you were who you wanted to be, that's, that's all that you can do in life is, is to be genuine and to be yourself and to be thoughtful of others. Yeah, I mean, kindness and forgiveness. So simple. Yes. You know, so hard for some. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, you know, it's the millennial generation. Uh, they're so self-focused, yet they need to be a little bit more self-aware. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, that's what you guys are kind of getting to is forgiveness and kindness all come from a little bit of self-awareness mm-hmm. and your awareness of, you know, how you are perceived and behave with others. Mm-hmm. And I just think that, you know, it all comes encompasses that whole social contract is... Exactly. Be kind and to forgive. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and often I think, especially in life as you get older, you mm-hmm. realize uh, the most important lessons in life and the ones that are the hardest to learn are the usually the simple, basic mm-hmm. ones. Mm-hmm. You know, they, you uh, you spend a lot of your time, at least I did, trying to figure out like some magical way around, some yeah. you know solution that doesn't exist. And the reality is, hey, you know what the solution is? It's the basics, and you have to you have to live by those. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah. So. Well, cool. All right, guys. Well, now is the fun plug time. So (laughs) is there, you know, where can they first find you, Barbara, on social media? Sure. You can find me on Twitter at Barbara J. Dillon. Uh, Barbara's spelled a little bit differently. It's spelled like Barbara Streisand. So it's B-A-R-B-R-A-J Dillon, D-I-L-L-O-N. 
Uh, Fanbase Press is on Twitter at Fanbase underscore Press. We're, of course, on Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, YouTube. We joke everything except MySpace. Mm-hmm, yeah. uh, Brian, where can people find yeah. you? I'm on Twitter at Comic Book Slayer, and I am on Instagram at Comic Book Sniffer. And uh, the only other thing that I would throw out there is uh, if you're listening to this now, we actually have a new book called The Sequels, which basically takes your... Um, imagine like your favorite 80s uh, adventure films like say E.T. or uh, Never Ending Story or Monster Squad. Imagine those characters going through the experiences that they did and then 30 years later they've you know they're grown ups now but their lives really haven't ever peaked the way they did <laughs> yeah. as, as children. That's interesting. You know so a mysterious force brings them together for one last adventure. Mm-hmm. It's an awesome book, a great creative team, and it's, it's available for pre-order. You get some cool exclusives if you pre-order, so you can check that out at fanbasepress.com as well. And you can also find it at thesequelscomic.com, and uh, we're doing the uh, single issues separately and digitally on Comixology first. So starting in February of 2019, you can get issue number one of right. the sequels on Comixology, and each of the four issues subsequently each following month. And as Bryant mentioned, the trade paperback is available for pre-order. That will come out in July. Oh, cool. And any upcoming events or any new books other than the sequels? So, we will yeah. be at yeah. uh, this upcoming weekend, yeah. uh, the Sunday. I don't know the actual date. 27th. 27th mm-hmm. of January. We'll be at Pasadena Comic Con. And then uh, con season will start shortly after that for us. So we'll have a few starting off with Long Beach Comic Expo mm-hmm. at the end of February. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. I know, and con season's a busy season. It is. <laughs> but it's a fun, it is a, a fun, fun season. season. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, and, and that's the point, right? You gotta have fun. Yeah. Well, uh, that's it, guys. So since I'm Lucretia Line, you can always find me at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N anywhere on the internet since there is only one. So see you next Tuesday. So there's this new podcast you guys should totally be listening to. It's called Dead Inside. It's got myself, Lucretia Lyon, and Jacqueline Pissarro. And we talk about a lot of effed up stuff. That uh, you'll absolutely enjoy and laugh at, like murder. And uh, serial killers. And um, we speak with other comics, and we talk to other different types of personalities. Yeah, and personality disorders. That um, we point out in other people and in ourselves. Because we're full of it. (laughs) Yeah, so guys, Dead Inside has new episodes every Tuesday on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and Spotify.